Well, that's the most definitive word we've heard yet on whether, in fact, it was a car bomb. We were just about to raise that question. And if, in fact, there had been a crater, that's one of the telltale signs that a car bomb has been exploded in front of a building. The mayor is saying there's an eight-foot crater and several, a couple of cars at least, have been joined by the heat and the force of the explosion. Uh, and that makes the most sense in terms of the nature of the damage to the building and how they could then have avoided whatever security existed at the uh, A.P. Murrah Federal Building. That's the correct name of it. We're now told it is a complex in downtown Oklahoma City housing more than 500 workers. How many civilians who were there doing business at the time, we don't know for sure. We also heard the assistant fire chief talk about the long, long hours still ahead to try to extricate people who are trapped in the rubble. And of course, the great danger here is that that building could come down on the rescue workers at any time. Those of you who remember what happened in Los Angeles at the time of the Northbridge earthquake, very often in the middle of the night, the rescue workers would have to very quickly leave a building as one floor or another began then to cave in. So they'll be in there shoring it up first and then trying to remove the people from the tons of wreckage of steel and concrete as several floors simply collapsed. We still do not have a number of fatalities absolutely confirmed, probably as many as eight at this point. That could include six children. It is expected to go much higher than that, given the number of people in the building at the time. We don't know who planted this bomb or placed the car bomb there or why. A good deal of speculation, but so far, no one, so far as we can tell, has called to take, not credit, but responsibility for this uh, mendacious act, this absolutely evil act that uh, not only cost so many people uh, serious injuries, but probably cost a good many lives as well and struck at the heart of the federal system, not just at Oklahomans. And then, of course, there is the psychological damage and the emotional damage as well. Uh, Dr. Neil Livingston is an expert on terrorism who was in Oklahoma City not too long ago talking to civic groups about uh, the danger of terrorism striking anywhere in America. In fact, Dr. Livingston, there's been another gas attack, by the way, in Japan at the Yokohama rail station now. Uh, we've had the attacks in Argentina, the attacks here, the attacks in Pakistan. In fact, it's very hard to guard against this kind of cowardly terrorism, isn't it? That's right, and terrorism is very, very cyclical. It, uh, a few years ago, everyone was saying, well, it appears that the age of terrorism is over. And uh, what we see is it comes back and bites us again when our guard is down. Uh, it's just too easy to do. There are even manuals that tell you how to make bombs that you can buy through the mail and probably uh, allow any individual to become a terrorist in the United States. So it's a problem that we're going to have to get better at, uh, at anticipating, at hardening our buildings. And, uh, and it's time to. And as you peer there into the middle floors of the federal building, uh, John we Hansen are now turning to the ongoing to coverage of the bombing with our the CNN affiliate in Oklahoma City. Calls for help. You can imagine that happening there as you peer into the debris. Uh, John Hansen telling us that this will, own, this will not be something that is uh, taken care of here in a matter of hours. But this is going to be a process that could take several days. They're already bringing in generators, bringing in lights uh, as they prepare themselves for what will be a very, very long evening of search and rescue through that entire building. Nine floors in all, and as you see, as we earlier were showing you our, uh, the aerial shot, just about the entire, all nine floors had at least one section of them uh, completely scooped away from the building. There you can see it looking up the front face of the building, and this was uh, just shortly after the explosion had first occurred when the fires were still burning in the cars that had been adjacent to the one that we believe started all of this. Mayor Norick telling us that he's been told that it was a, a car bomb loaded with about 1,200 pounds of explosives that started this entire thing. When we were talking about, Devin was talking about the rescue effort, which is going on and will go on for days. It's going to be really tricky, though. That building, as you can tell, is just extremely unstable worries of collapse and everything else but they're going in there for those people who are crying out for help right now and again we mentioned that 62 member rescue and search squad flying in from phoenix they have equipment that will help them detect sounds from people who are trapped inside they're one of the five or six units in this country who can do this and they are on their way right now to help out we will be seeing a night search a day search another night search until everything is taken care of
down there. We've got a correction on uh, one of the blood donation centers in Edmond. We've been telling you it's been at Hobby Lobby. That was uh, our understanding early on. It is at the Blood Institute, which is at 3434 South Boulevard. The address has been correct. Uh, we were sending you, uh, we apologize for that, but uh, of course, information. We've been watching the local coverage of the Oklahoma City bomb explosion. We will have more information as it becomes available. Needless to say, Lynn, this is an ongoing tragedy, and we'll have plenty of reports throughout the day. Back to you. Okay, thanks very much, Toria. In other news, the U.S. Supreme Court is taking up the... Just one thing that will be looked into, but as far as you're concerned, uh, really still... Uh, no information, no credible information on who caused this. No, I have a feeling it was not. I think that was uh, someone with another purpose uh, to make it appear as if it was the Nation of Islam. But uh, again, that's just conjecture at this point. It happens to be something that the president uh, agrees with. Uh, so there's no way of telling at this point uh, uh, whether or not that has anything to do with it. All right, we do know it's a terrorist uh, type of... Uh, I mean, this is the conclusion you have to come uh, Senator, are you satisfied with what the president had told you about the federal response, that I everything's being done right now? I am satisfied with the federal response, and I'm also sa satisfied with the state response. I talked to uh, Governor Keating, and, and uh, I think we're doing everything we can. And uh, it, so, but again, uh, it's, it's a tough one to handle. We're just going to have to get to the bottom of it. Lots of questions uh, out there today, Senator, regarding this, and I'm sure lots of Americans are scratching their heads and saying, Oklahoma City? It can happen anywhere. If it can happen there, it can happen anywhere else. And I think that, and the president, again, uh, stated this, and we both agreed on, on this, that it's, uh, first we try to save the lives that are there now, then we try to find out what it is, because uh, this is too well orchestrated, in my uh, view, uh, not to be something connected with terrorist activities, and we're going to have to stop it. Uh, stressing that we don't know who's behind this. We did talk with the former uh, Oklahoma Congressman Dave McCurdy earlier today who talked about the uh, some Islamic groups uh, that are in that city that have caused concerns and uh, have been watched. Uh, what, what do you know about that? Well, I, I just wouldn't want to comment on Dave McCurdy. He was the one I beat for this job. And, uh, and I, I don't think that he has any information uh, uh, other than what the president has. And I, I just talked to the president. I think it's probably doing a disservice to be uh, coming to conclusions uh, concerning the uh, Nation of Islam at this point. Well, what will people need in Oklahoma City uh, uh, as this day and, and the days uh, uh, come afterwards? Uh, what will they need as the shock wears off, as emotions set in, uh, as more we hear more news of, of those that have died? There is information that children have died in this. Well, and there are currently people trapped. Uh, the, the current thing that is being done right now is to save the lives of those who are, those lives that are endangered at the present time. And then as soon as that's over and the dust settles, we'll have a chance to look at it and see, and of course try to find out what, uh, who is responsible. That would be the first thing. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to reflect on that tomorrow and see. If no one comes forward and says and claims responsibility, uh, how confident are you in the uh, the investigation afterwards that they'll be able to piece this together and come to some conclusion? Well, I seriously doubt that anyone would come forward and claim responsibility unless it's uh, some nut out there, and there are a number of those, of course. The office building and our executive director have been severely wounded by a flying glass, so there were a lot of people severely injured in nearby buildings. Um, so it's uh, it really is our worst nightmare come true. Is there anything in the Oklahoma political climate that would suggest that this kind of desperate act would occur? I don't think so at all. We're a very law-abiding, uh, peaceful people. We've, uh, being internally in the United States, uh, inland, we have uh, come to not really fear these kinds of actions. But uh, again, as we learned during the Persian Gulf conflict, uh, there were attempts to infiltrate even the central parts of the country. The only thing I can think about at this time is that uh, we did have some of our uh, FBI folks, uh, ATF folks uh, involved, of course, uh, when the Branch Davidian matter uh, occurred uh, in Waco. And uh, I, I know there are various speculations as to whether or not that could be involved or whether or not we're here dealing with uh, some international terrorist organization. But uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, it's impossible to seal our borders and even the central parts of the of the country are not immune, obviously, from this kind of attack, uh, even if it's orchestrated internationally. There are some buildings, the adjoining buildings, that probably will be out of commission. So you'll have a very large percentage of the population uh, unable to carry on their their jobs. 
and it's going to be an inconvenience. It's going to be uh, 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 perhaps a tragedy in some cases. All right. Senator James Inhofe, we know you are in your airplane getting ready to take off for Oklahoma City. Thanks for taking time to talk with us. Thank you, Debbie. All right. Uh, we'll continue our coverage. Uh, we have suspended programming uh, for now as ever since this uh, happened this morning, and we'll continue with more for you in just a moment. Assistant Fire Chief. Bomb squad told us that if there had been a secondary device, that the violent explosion from the primary device would have detonated it. So uh, we have bomb squad members inside the building with our rescue teams in case we do come across something, they can take care of it immediately. Okay, so the original uh, word on the street of uh, possibly as many as three bombs in total is not necessarily true at this time? Uh, nothing that I know to confirm that. Okay. Now we've also, obviously we just have a big bus driving by, so you can probably see it and hear the noise, so I'm going to speak up a little bit here. We, we've heard the rumors, uh, and again, tell me if this is confirmed, six children dead and two adults so far. Okay, we, we've heard eight dead, but uh, I don't have the breakdown yet. I'm going back inside the building now, Jeff, to try to get uh, a, a more accurate count of things for you, and I'll, I'll be out in about an hour. I'm okay. going to go in with our crew and see how we're doing. And one final thing is that there's a, there was a word on uh, collapse, and you mentioned that earlier, right after the initial bomb blast. Part of the building collapsed. Uh, has there been any other collapse since then? We've had some minor uh, secondary collapses inside the building. Uh, and, and that's going to happen to us. We've got to be very careful as we remove rubble that's unstable. Uh, there's some things that we don't want to cause for ourselves, but uh, that's always a possibility right now. And yes, we have had some secondary collapses. What about other buildings in the area that are very, very close here? What about uh, any of these other buildings that have been hit hard about this, uh, uh, with this blast? Are there any other buildings that are in serious danger right now? Yes, Jeff, uh, across the street, and there are, there are some area buildings, as, as you can see, that uh, have some pretty significant structural damage. These people are going to have to get structural engineers in those buildings to check the integrity prior to letting their employees back in. Again, I think Mayor Norick this afternoon will have an announcement as to uh, uh, if people want to stay to stay down stay out of downtown tomorrow. Okay. So. Well, tell me about the emotional effect on the firefighters and the rescue people that are working. You brought people in as far away as Tulsa, Davis, Oklahoma. There's people from all over the state coming in here. Uh, what kind of an emotional toll are these people going to be facing, and are you setting up a, an emotional triage for your workers? Yes, sir. We've got a quick lens and stress debriefing area set up uh, when we bring our folks out. It is emotional. I've uh, met firefighters coming out of the building. have had tears in their eyes uh, uh, from crawling through and, and uh, looking at the devastation station both to the to the the, the building and, and the people and uh, it, it's emotional trying to rescue people and uh, it is it's very taxing and uh, but, but we're going to be here and throughout it and we're going to do the very best we can john thanks yes. for your help thank you appreciate that's you uh, john hansen who's the assistant fire chief right, in oklahoma Daniel. city we want to remind all of you that some of our stations will be leaving us now we will have continuing coverage throughout the day on this nbc station tonight of course on nbc nightly news and later on dateline nbc uh, some of those stations will be leaving us now but we will have continuing coverage compared it a little bit to the way that a tornado works with the way that the right. air in I from above went down and flat and just it just kept falling it was a horrible noise horrible noise what did it sound like i don't know it i didn't hear a like a i didn't hear a noise it was just after what had happened, whatever happened, happened, just the roar of the whole building crumbling. And where, where I was sitting, it was the only place the floor didn't cave in. I mean, right over here, the floor was gone. And so the floor that you were sitting on didn't cave, but all around you it did? No, where I, my little area where I was sitting, but the... I was on the seventh floor, and then, of course, the eighth floor came down and went through, and then they just kept on going down. Listen, there was a window to a hall by my desk, and I crawled, crawled over and got out, and went. The stairwell was still lit. The light was on in the stairwell. I'm fine. Are you? Yeah. How do you think that happened? I happened to be in the part of the... The only part of the fifth floor, our part of the fifth floor, that even gone. It's either a bomb or a gas explosion from across the street. No, I, I just happened to be in that room. It's not the room I normally am in. I was working on a project. Uh,
happened, and I happened to was lucky I had a table to dive under. What went, well, what this, went through your mind? Where's the what, table to get under? Well, yeah. Where, what's happening? You know, it, 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 it's like it happened in slow motion. I thought it was an earthquake, because I, I resided in California for many years, and it was almost like slow motion. I, I felt a, a shake, and then began shaking more. And I, I, I dove under my desk, and then the glass all came in. I think that helped save me. The, all the glass was gone. It's all over the office. Where, where, where's your office located? Can you point to it? Here on the fifth floor, right on the end. The only, I can walk from here, from my office to the door where I normally enter, and there's nothing there anymore. It's just, it's from me to these individuals that the building's gone. So, so tell me about the building, the, the part that I'm looking at that I'm seeing the most destruction. What, what is that? What's there? Well, for our section, that's our main office area. The only office that were spared was mine and my secretary and my officer, and then a little section of a conference room, which Dr. Espy happened to be sitting in. The whole rest of the office is gone. Dad was a couple blocks away when he heard the explosion and went back. And I'm sure glad he did that. Any, do you understand that any other children were injured there? Yeah, um, there was quite, yeah, there was quite a few. Quite a few injured, but the... They were real uh, efficient in getting the kids out. And what, stuff did, the, what did it look like there? Uh, basically, what you've been seeing on the TV, lots of glass, lots of buildings, uh, you know, debris flying around. Yeah. Quite a lot going on. Yes, he has. Yes. What are your what thoughts happened? right now? I am so relieved. <laughs> and I'm praying for all those other people. <laughs> what happened? I understand that he just been dropped off? Yeah, Dad had just dropped him off at the downtown Y. And, um... Dad was a couple blocks away when he heard the explosion and went back. And I'm sure glad he did that. <laughs> do you understand any other children were injured there? Um, there yeah, there was quite a few that were Quite a injured. few injured, but the, they were real uh, efficient in getting the kids out and what stuff did, at the... What did it look like there? Uh, basically, what you've been seeing on the TV, lots of glass, lots of buildings, uh, you know, debris flying around, lots of people with cuts and blood stuff. You, you just broke yep. your yep. What did the... What did right. you, what did you see when you saw that thing? I was just pulling out, I was a couple of blocks away, and it felt like somebody had rear-ended me in the back of the truck, and I just happened to look back and saw the smoke, and so I just turned it around and ran back up, and uh, uh, from where, where I was, it looked like the smoke was coming out of the Y building, so I was really panicking at that time, but uh, it just looked like every building there, I was thinking, well, that must be where the explosion took place because of all the, I was surprised at how many of the other buildings were affected, too. What are the children doing? Do what? what? No, were the children doing? Well, probably just what you think, crying and stuff, you know, with cuts and stuff. They were scared. Just like People involved in the tragedy in Oklahoma City, which has sent shockwaves out to uh, all four corners of the United States. The president of the United States uh, said his top priority was to, first of all, get the necessary assistance into Oklahoma City. That is being affected through a Washington command center and a mobile command center now being set up in Oklahoma City uh, involving the Federal Emergency Management Association, uh, General Services Administration, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the Marshal Service, the Secret Service, and others. On the line with us uh, is Kathy Garrett of the uh, American Red Cross who is in Oklahoma City. Uh, Ms. Garrett, the president also... Can we put that, uh, sus uh, the suspect information back up on the screen for everyone? If, if you haven't seen it or didn't have a chance to jot it down, uh, the, the, they do have suspect information. This has come out from the FBI. Uh, two of the men involved, perhaps, are Middle, Middle Eastern men. Uh, one is 20 to 25, the other is 35 to 38, both with dark hair and a beard. And they were both wearing blue pants, black shirts, and coats. The driver, don't have a description on him, but we do know a suspect vehicle, and there it is, a brown Chevy pickup with tinted windows, and it had a bug shield on front. It was last seen northbound on Walker. That would be going away from this building devastated this morning. We assume probably the clearinghouse on a lot of this will be the FBI, so if you have any information on that, probably the most direct way to get it to authorities is to... Uh phone the FBI. And if you have any trouble with that, let us know so we can maybe direct you elsewhere. There are, uh, there have been some uh, appeals. KWTV in Oklahoma City, our affiliate there, reporting uh, their first line on the suspects that uh, may be considered by the FBI in connection with the bombing this morning at the uh, Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. Now to Kathy Garrett, the American Red Cross, who's on the line with us. Uh, well, those are our three priorities 
And um, we've contacted all of our volunteers. We have volunteers from surrounding counties that are here. And um, first aid, I would say, is the first priority because it looks as if we have thousands of people um, that have injuries from this disaster. Are you saying your problem is being met or you still need more uh, medical trainees? Um, actually, we, it is being met. Um, we have a reserve of volunteers that are at our chapter house right now, and um, we'll be using them probably later tonight and tomorrow. But we've had um, a great response from our community. It's just been tremendous, and it is being met. How are you set up for this medical response? As I understand it, the hospitals are overbooked, if we can put it that way. Where, where are you set up, and how are you operating? Um, we have a first aid um, center set up, which is basically across from the building, and that's where our first aid people are. Um, we also have a shelter set up at a church that um, we're taking overflow of people to, people with minor injuries um, that we can take care of that really don't have to have hospital assistance. That's where we'll take them. But um, we have four major hospitals here that are taking um, people with major injuries, and um, right now that's how it's working. We heard some of the local uh, outlets there in Oklahoma City reporting blood shortages earlier. Is that a problem? Um, I have not been notified that that's a problem, and um, if, if it is, I'm sure that we will have reserves from other communities. Tulsa chapter, they um, usually back us up in major disasters, and um, they have a large blood supply, so I think that we're okay. Um, our chapter house actually doesn't have um, blood, the blood Insti institute supplies our county, um, and I have not been notified that that is a problem at this point. Since you are, Ms. Garrett, across the street from uh, where this rescue operation is going on, do you get a sense that things are becoming more under control, or do you get a sense that there's still much work to be done? Um, it looks like there is still much work to be done. It is just amazing. Um, right now I'm standing right beside a building that's been destroyed from this, which is across the street. And um, it, it, the destruction is just incredible. It, although the people seem to be much more under control, um, when I got here there was an uproar because there were other bomb threats. So they were moving people back. And um, the really bad situation with that is that we couldn't go in the building right away or the firemen couldn't go in right away to get to the people that needed assistance. Mm -hmm. Are they still pulling people out uh, a little at a time? Yeah, they're still pulling them out. I am. Um, one fireman just said that they are coming out of there with tears, that there are people that they can't get to or it's taking a, lo a long time for them to get to and they can hear them crying and screaming out for help. And I think um, it's probably one of the worst situations that some of these firemen have seen. What do you sense on down the road uh, later today, tonight, tomorrow, next week? I sense that... Um, uh, as far as the people, I, I say that this this could take um, a few days to get to everybody and to clear the building out. I'm just guessing. Um, as far as the destruction that's done, that that's going to be uh, that's a long ways away before they get everything cleaned up and back to normal down here. Can you give us a sense of how this tragedy is binding the community together? It, it, it's amazing. I can, tell from, I can tell you from the Red Cross perspective, um, we have a volunteer base of about 3,000, and obviously they don't all volunteer all the time. And we have had, I mean, our, our chapter house is just flooded with people and with calls, um, people in the community wanting to make donations of food or whatever they can. Everyone really is pulling together because um, this is really the first time that anything like this has happened in our community. We, ha we were in, I didn't get a chance to talk with the federal emergency planner earlier about something we all have heard about but have not necessarily related to a circumstance such as this, and that's post-traumatic stress. Have you, do you have any experience with that? Um, yes, and we have workers, our mental health workers, that's what they are there for, um, to work with the people that um, actually may not have been physically injured, but they have seen some very traumatic things and they're there to assess um, who may need some help in that area and, and who, who doesn't need help. Um, one person told me that the, some of these children are holding up better than the adults. Mm -hmm. They're just sitting there waiting for someone to come get them, and they're fine. That, um, 
that 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 aspect of the story is sending shutters through all of us who are watching from far away here and that is the fact that a daycare center was involved here. yeah I, I i cannot believe it it is amazing and i think that's what everyone is so distraught about that there were children in that building not i mean it's bad enough that that it happened that for children to have been in there as well it's it's awful well miss garrett are you uh are you in need of anything? Is the American Red Cross in need of anything? Um, at this point, uh, we have such a great core of volunteers. We are really um, at a point where we, I, I can't believe I'm saying that we don't, um, but at this point we don't need anything. Although to support these type of efforts and our volunteer base and our mass care feeding, the Red Cross can always use donations for disaster relief. And this is obviously um, what this situation is. All right, Kathy Garrett, much good luck to you. Thank you. And to your people there in Oklahoma City as the rescue operation and the treatment of the injured continues uh, throughout the day and uh, for who knows how long. Okay. Natalie. Thank you. Thanks, Lou. We want to bring you the latest now on the explosion. The governor's office says at least 18 people have been killed, six of them children, in today's bomb blast at the federal building in downtown Oklahoma City. Fire department officials say a number of people are believed trapped alive in the damaged building. Many of them still may be children. They say they can see the people, but they can't get to them. A daycare center was housed in the building, and many children are among the dozens hurt. Hospitals put the number of injured now at more than 100. CNN has learned a large car bomb outside the building caused the huge blast shortly after 9 a.m. local time, leaving a crater eight feet deep outside the building. The direct troubled by the explosion, he has directed emergency federal aid be offered to help Oklahoma City deal with the aftermath. Capitol Hill sources say FBI officials have been nervous for weeks over fears of increased terrorist activities. Other sources say law enforcement has found links to terrorism in Oklahoma City and a possible connection between today's explosion and Islamic terrorist groups is being explored. Now we take you to Reed Collins. He's standing by at our Washington Bureau. Reed. Finally, thank you. And that's a little precise of what we know so far, but uh, what is to be found out, of course, is the real mystery here in what happened around uh, opening time office-wise in Oklahoma City. With us is uh, Jack McGeorge, who is president now of the public are really uh, uh, cowardly, uh, almost satanic people that would uh, uh, slaughter innocent people like this. And I, I certainly hope that they're going to be apprehended and, and punished uh, uh, very quickly. Well, we have had reports recently that the FBI is looking for three suspects, two described as Middle Eastern. Uh, we don't know yet uh, who is behind this, but we he have heard reports of uh, uh, you, some terrorists groups uh, in this country, specifically Oklahoma City. Why do you think uh, this could have happened to Oklahoma City? Well, it's a shocking thing because it's not anything that you would think of ever happening to a place like in, in Oklahoma or Oklahoma City. We're a pretty peaceful neighborhood, and, and I can't think of any uh, terrorist activity we've ever had before. Uh, so we're not a hotbed of terrorist activity. There may have been some that were there, obviously, but uh, these are terrorists, and I don't know where they're from. I don't know if, you know, if they're uh, uh, from this country or not, but uh, regardless, anybody that would do this type of activity, uh, plant a bomb in a public building, uh, responsible for the loss of a lot of lives, destroying many other lives, because frankly, if you're a parent and you lost a child, or if you are lost a loved one that was working there, or they're injured significantly, uh, uh, this is going to ruin a lot of people's lives. It's going to cost millions of dollars. Um, we need to do everything we can do to uh, find who's responsible and punish them aggressively. And, I, I think this makes an excellent case for the death penalty. Uh, anybody that would do this type of activity is, is certainly worthy of that punishment. Obviously a tense situation. What are you hearing about the possibility of other bombs in other buildings in the area? Well, you know, that's something that we've heard about, uh, just, just rumors. Uh, we're going to go about our business and, and, and we rescue people we can rescue. Uh, you know, we had to shut down our operation for about uh, 20, 30 minutes because of, of that. And uh, that was very frustrating because we, we were right at the point where we had people and we had to leave them but well, we got back to them and and uh like i said it's just going to be a maybe a two or three day event a moment ago i alluded to a report on our affiliate kwtv on the number of dead the carnage associated with this explosion today uh we're going to bring you a taped uh, 
version of that report now where the building is uh, if you can just look right back here beside me there is the front side of the federal building that uh, the explosion took place at nine o'clock this morning i uh, was going to talk with some doctors in just a moment these nurses from this triad center where we were anticipating they were going to be bringing some of the people who were wounded here we've set up with about probably three to four hundred volunteers here and tell me your name and tell me what they've just told you here at this triad center my name's joanne mccurley they just told us that they had found 80 people and only two were alive and they told us all to go home okay so this triad center then is dismantling is that correct on correct this on this sure. side okay and who told you this about uh, the people who were inside who did you get this word the leader, from the guy yeah. in charge of the nurses all right, so these other people that are inside, uh, these are casualties then? Is this what you're uh, hearing? That's my understanding. All right, uh, this not confirmed yet by TV9, but uh, what we're hearing at this uh, triad center, a very uh, grim picture as we've been uh, anticipating. We uh, uh, know that only, we saw two men uh, coming out earlier on some pictures. I don't know exactly when that was. So this triad center here on the east side, which was the second one, we know that there was a triad center where they were treating people who were coming out uh, earlier uh, that was actually closer to the building uh, this triad center then dismantling we've got about 400 volunteers here uh, about 20 ambulances behind me and at this point we had seen no activity here they did not bring anyone here so that's the scene I'm gonna try to get some more information uh, all right that's KWTV in Oklahoma City reporting just a short while ago on the uh, rescue operation going on at the federal building in Oklahoma City on the line with us now is Mayor Ron Norick uh, who is at the center of all this. How are you holding up, Mr. Mayor? Uh, I'm doing fine, thank you. Uh, this report that we're hearing of 80 dead, are people reporting to you the uh, extent of the uh, dead and injured? Uh, we have not got a report of the uh, number. We will do that at about 3.30 uh, central time. But the, uh, on, the, uh, on the carnage here. A lot of them have already left. The ambulance is even leaving. Uh, so basically, this triage center is going to be a morgue, and we'll just be here throughout the day right. monitoring it. Robin, we need to, we would like, if you can hold on to your doctor, we want to clarify one point with him in just a moment, but first we need to pass along some information. There is apparently a report that uh, a third explosive device, another bomb, we don't know if it's three or four, but perhaps another bomb has been found inside that federal building. They are moving everyone back once again. This would be the fourth time that this has happened. This has happened. One question we have, Robin, if you're still there and if you've still got uh, your doctor, doctor there with here. you. Yes, here. Please clarify for us, when he talks about there only being two survivors, that's of the people we know are trapped in there, right? Uh, Dr. Bob, uh, let me ask you, we need to clarify about two survivors. Is this after the initial people came out, or two survivors that they did find once they started going inside the building? Once There's they started going inside, I was, I was at the site, and the two su survivors were brought out at that point, prior to the finding of the second bomb device. And at that point, everything was totally uh, demobilized from that area. All personnel were removed. The people who made it out initially after the first blast? The people who initially made it out, there was multiple uh, injured victims. And I would say probably within the next, the first hour, they were mobilized out of the area. How do you go about the process of trying to identify people if uh, they were in uh, a state of what you described to us earlier? I think the... The Red Cross in Oklahoma City is going to be taking care of that, and if there's concern about survivors, they should communicate with Red Cross. They're probably going to be the center for that. All right, thank you, uh, Dr. Bob, for uh, being here with us. We'll go back to you guys. Well, uh, Heidi, you know, I, I'm, a, to tell you the truth, a little confused about what we're finding because we had some report that there were a bunch of people trapped in there that they could talk to. Now we're hearing that anybody that's alive has been taken out. It's possible that once we were all pushed back and running, that people were still making their way out of the building. Because again, I know there were people that I could see shortly before we had to evacuate the scene. So when they're talking about only two survivors, I believe that means once the people, once they went back in. Yes, we know of a lot of people who did get out of the building. Certainly do. And um, in various stages of, of being injured. Okay. Uh, Heidi, thanks very much. Uh, right now. All right, the latest from KWTV, Mr. Mayor Ron Nork of Oklahoma City still on the line with us. So they are finding survivors. Uh, that's what we heard in that report, the triage center reporting that of the 80 people uh, found in the last how much ever time, two of them were found alive. So there are survivors, but not many. Mr. Mayor, are you yes. still with us? Yes. All right. Uh, 
What is the uh, of a live broadcast now? We're going to join in and see what it's about. Under 200, maybe. Did you hear people? No. Are they calling for help at all? I didn't hear anything. There's so much chaos up there. You just would not understand. There's so much chaos up there. And uh, it's being trying to be controlled and uh, people doing their jobs to try to make this a little bit easier than what it is. I don't, couldn't imagine you making it any easier if you take a look at that building over there. But Can you tell us about the children you have, James? Uh, I'd rather not comment on that. Were you out there since 9 o'clock, or what time approximately did you arrive? About 10 o'clock. About 10 o'clock? Yes, ma'am. Were you there a minute ago when the, uh, somebody yelled they thought they'd seen a second device? Yes, sir. We were uh, in the, or close to the parking area trying to recover a victim. And uh, do you know uh, you believe that? one of the medical yeah, workers who spotted it? Uh, I believe it was somebody from the ATF. I'm not sure. There's so many people in that area that, you know, once someone says like, something like that, and after everything that's occurred in the past few hours, it was just uh, a track meet to safety. It must be tough knowing there's people, there are people still in there and, and you hear this yell and you've got to run from the scene. I just want to go home and hold my kid. Thank you. One of the uh, medical workers here at the scene right now um, telling us, in fact, before we went live a minute ago, telling us that uh, whoever did this particular thing uh, should die a vicious death uh, for what they've done. Uh, after seeing especially the uh, children and adults who've been victimized. And uh, you heard him say just a minute ago that uh, when somebody asked uh, to talk about the children that he has treated today, that uh, that was something he just didn't feel up to uh, discussing right now, Jennifer. And that's understandable. I'll tell you, the video itself is just extremely difficult to watch. I can't imagine what it'd be like to be in the middle of it down there. We have some uh, new fatality and injury numbers to pass along to you. These come to us from ABC, and I will need help from Janice, the producer, back in the control room. We understand, do we, Janice, there are 17 dead. Does the number, is it 19 total or 17 total? 19 total, 17 dead are children, two adults so far. Uh, this is according to ABC, 17 dead children and two adults uh, we've been hearing CNN of course is reporting 78 dead uh, our thanks again uh, to KOCO and the other affiliates in in Oklahoma City doing a yeoman's job today providing uh, the information and all of the pictures uh, which uh, many people uh, here and other places have reacted to uh, as they did the Beirut Marine Barracks bombing Natalie Lou, we started reporting about this devastating explosion some four and a half hours ago. We've been reporting straight since. Let's watch now the dramatic first moments as this tragedy unfolded this morning. Quickly, CNN joins uh, affiliate in Oklahoma City, KFOR, to bring you the latest uh, that they're having live updates on this explosion that's happened at the uh, federal court building in downtown Oklahoma City. This is live from KFOR. Running around trying to find friends and co-workers the streets are filled with people, and the streets are just filled with debris, uh, literally covered with tree branches as many of the trees have been ripped and torn apart. But once again, the Alfred Murray Federal Building is where this explosion occurred, and that building is devastated. Certainly, people that were in the rooms on that one side of the building, it would be unlikely they could survive because it is just a mess of, of hanging rods. It is. It's, it's a bit went off on that side of the building. That's exactly what it looks like. Back to you, Lee. Okay, thank you, Tara. And again, we're getting reports right then. That was from Tara Bloom. She's about a block away from where the explosion happened. If you look up on the map up on your screen right now, you can see it happened at 5th and Robinson in downtown Oklahoma City. That is the Alfred Murrow Federal Building. If you're just joining us, a disaster happening this morning. You may have felt it. We felt it from miles away. There was an explosion that happened in downtown Oklahoma City. If you step outside, you can see the black cloud of smoke coming up from downtown Oklahoma City from where that explosion happened. Again, at 5th and Robinson, the Alfred Murrow Federal Building. If you have people who work down there, friends, family, relatives, anyone you know do not try to call down there apparently the phone lines are all busy right now uh, we're trying to set up a live shot right now we have a couple of crews working down there we have one on 6th and Harvey and another one that just about a block away from where the scene is and I'm being handed information right now one of the things that's happening we have lots of uh, watch out for the live shot we have lots of 
traffic problems going on, and um, you can see everyone here is running around trying to find out exactly what's happening. Lots of traffic problems, and they are asking that you please not drive down to downtown Oklahoma City. Please do not drive down to Oklahoma City, to downtown Oklahoma City. Do not go down there. Do not walk. Stay away from the area because what it's doing, all that traffic, is hampering emergency crews that are also trying to get down there. In fact, if you're over there, maybe you may even want to pull over to the side of the road and try to get away and out of the way of emergency crews, fire department, uh, people, po po police department personnel who are all on their way down there trying to help the injured. And there are many injured. There are many people covered in blood being carried away on the I want to just explain to you real quickly, we're taking uh, Oklahoma City's uh, KFOR's uh, coverage here of this explosion that's happened at the federal court building in downtown Oklahoma City. The reporter earlier said that there were injured people everywhere. The streets are filled with debris. And this reporter said that it was unlikely that people could survive in the part of the building that's been blown away. Earlier reports said uh, from Associated Press that a large part of the building was blown away and that it is a six-story building. It does house the Social Security uh, on the ground floor. Let's go back to the coverage from KFOR. Who had been hit by glass and... Uh had uh, quite a bit of blood covering uh, his, his face and neck. He seemed to be okay. He walked in on his own power. Uh, but we are um, getting ready for any sort of injuries that will come in. People are being diverted from other departments as they can spare them, come down to the emergency room. Uh, additional physicians are being brought in. Um, the sort of disaster team is being readied here, and some uh, primary care physicians are being uh, are are volunteering their time to come in and take care of some of the more uh, minor injuries so that the emergency department doesn't get uh, clogged up any more than it has to be. But uh, obviously it's a, a real frantic pace over here. Everybody is sort of getting ready for uh, as many patients as we can uh, possibly handle. Randy, I have a question for you. Can okay. you hear me, Randy? Excuse me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Randy, uh, now you say just one, just, is it just one person that's walked in so far? Just or one has walked in so far. Okay. And did he walk in on his own? Yes, he did. He was, uh, I, I think he was in, just in the general downtown area from what little he had to say. He was, uh, was fairly calm, sort of walked up to the counter of the emergency desk and said, I got hit by glass. And it was obvious that, uh, you know, his... Uh, uh, business clothes had been uh, pretty well shredded by glass, and you could tell that uh, uh, he had been hit up the side of the head and the, the neck area. Uh, to go back to take care of whatever we do with our patients on the outside, because there is nothing to do. Everyone that's in the building right now, in two hours there was one person found, and everyone else is dead. Everyone else who's in the building at this point is beyond help, is what you're... Yeah. Okay. They're, they're unable to reach these people or the ones that we have been, that they have been discovering, excuse me, um, we can't provide help for. I mean, they're beyond help. They're dead. About how many people do you have any idea are in there? Well, when we, when we were released to come out, the coroner had indicated that he needed 100 more body bags. So he wouldn't ask for that if he didn't need it. So the indication that you're getting is at least another 100 people dead in that building? sounds like it. How are the medical workers holding up? This is such a horrible, horrible thing. Has any of this reality hit you yet? No. Uh, we're still living on adrenaline mostly at this point. When you initially go in, you're trying to deal with these things first response and you go on instinct and adrenaline. It's later whenever the reality sinks in. It'll be late this afternoon when we all start sitting around together crying because that's what she'll do. You know, especially with you know, I don't have small children. My children are grown, but these kids are not alive. I know there were six initially that got out that were in critical condition that went to Children's Medical Center, but now the rest of the kids that are in there, there's no help for them. And how, do you have any idea how many of them are children? How many children? There's, there's no way to tell. There's you know, no parts, of, parts of the building, there's the third, what, the third and the fourth floor are in the basement second and third and fourth floor in the basement the man that fell that was on the fourth floor just the floor dropped out from him so if you've got four floors of of devastation to go through it's going to take you a long time it's not like an earthquake hitting they're working inch by inch to um, get the rubble and the concrete and the steel off of these people and they're just going 
It's a slow, tedious process right now. When you say it's not like an earthquake hitting, you mean it's more severe and more profound. Yeah, right, right. Um, I lived through the San Francisco earthquake, and this isn't like it at all. The building, is, there's no comparison. This building has been torn and ripped apart from the inside out on that one side. In, the earth, in an earthquake, it breaks into large pieces. This is in small chunks. There's bolts of the building over a city block, you know, down the, down the street. Parking meters are in the middle of the street. Uh, pieces, pieces of cars are in there. Basically, um, I arrived on a, the scene about 30 minutes via the ambulance. I was at OU, and uh, there was a strong odor of propane. And on extricating some of the survivors from the building at the time, Robin, uh, a second uh, bomb device was located, and uh, immediately all the medical personnel and uh, ambulance personnel were moved from the area. The whole side of the building was totally gone, and there was uh, body parts all over. Apparently, the building collapsed uh, totally within about an hour ago. Dr. Brown just related the fact that there's only two survivors that were in the building. The rest are felt to be casualties, and it's going to be news reports that there have been uh, reports of, of two explosive devices, unexploded explosive devices, found. So. It's important for us to get the National Guard on the scene. It's important for us to get the uh, law enforcement community on the scene, the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, all of the authorities of the state to assist the Oklahoma City Police Department and the authorities in A, securing the area, obviously B, caring for the injured, and C, making sure that this does not recur. Any idea, sir, on who may be responsible for this, or, or any idea? None whatsoever. What the... Any uh, different uh, plans for what's going on around the Capitol building? Are you beating up security or the mansion? Anything like that? Are other state office buildings? Well, I can't be specific as to whatever security measures are being taken, but certainly whatever security measures are required will be taken. The fact is, we don't know what occurred, who did it, how extensive it was. It's just important that we provide now an immediate response to care for the injured an immediate response to provide law enforcement, crowd control, and emergency services through the Highway Patrol and, and Department of Public Safety and the Oklahoma National Guard, which we are doing. And of course, providing any assistance to the Oklahoma City Police Department and the Oklahoma City authorities they need. This was a, a, a ghastly thing that happened, and we want to make sure that those who have been injured will be cared for and that this cannot recur. Only the bomb squad man in. I assume that they've been all over the building and didn't find anything. I don't know. Fertilizer compound that caused the explosion. Very easy to obtain. Uh, apparently, according to KXAS uh, television out of Dallas, uh, federal officials are looking for suspects at this time. Uh, they are reporting that uh, three males of uh, Middle Eastern origin are being sought. The two passengers with dark hair and beards. The driver has not been described at this time. Apparently they rented a brown Chevrolet pickup truck from National Car Rental at the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. These individuals are being sought by federal officials. Uh, there, there's another problem that's cropping up there in Oklahoma City dealing with uh, the emergency there, and that is the weather. You can see in these pictures that there is a downpour now. Uh, they said a storm was moving in. It has arrived. And, of course, rescue and emergency officials are very concerned because of the broken glass, the devastation there in the building, that uh, any high winds and, of course, the bad rain will hamper their ability to work through the building and, of course, could make it much, much more dangerous. And uh, uh, we have several conferences coming up. Uh, of course, the governor is anticipated to make more remarks in about 45 minutes, a scheduled press conference there at the Civic Center in Oklahoma City. And before that, in about 15 minutes Eastern time, uh, 5 o'clock, we're anticipating remarks by President Clinton about the events that have occurred there in Oklahoma City. And, of course, ABC will stay with this and continue to update you and bring you these press conferences as they occur. This has been a special report from ABC News. Will it be, uh, I, I 
don't think that we should deal with what ifs. I think we should make sure that those people who are responsible are pursued and brought to justice. Do we have a last question, uh, please? Uh, General, the government, of, the government of Israel has offered its help because it has the vast experience with this sort of thing. Do you know if we're accepting that help? We will, of course, rely on any additional resource that can possibly be involved in, and be utilized appropriately in bringing these people to justice. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Attorney General Janet Reno, preceded by President Bill Clinton. The federal government pulling out all stops to find the perpetrators of this deadly explosion in Oklahoma City at a federal building this morning. Recapping briefly, the president said he's deploying a team of crisis management experts under the direction of the FBI to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City has been designated a disaster area. President Clinton says justice will be swift, certain, and severe when the perpetrators are found. Attorney General Janet Reno is saying that she will pursue every lead in bringing uh, these people to, to justice. Around the clock special FBI command post has been set up in Oklahoma City. I'm Morris Jones at the Fox News Studios in Washington. We now return you to your normal programming. Good afternoon. This has been a Fox News special report. Waiting for official counts to come in. We're still standing at 19 dead. We hope it stays there. If it's too high as it is already. 17 children involved. We keep hearing it's going to go higher. We almost, almost certainly. Let's yeah. go back to Tara Bloom again. When we last joined Tara, Tara has been kind of on the other side of this entire issue, and that is uh, following police along as the, on their investigation. It has led her to a South Side motel. Let's see if uh, where things stand now, Tara. Well, Devin, I'm at the Plaza Inn on Southeast 29th and I-35. I've just uh, a couple minutes ago finished talking to one of the employees that the FBI has been questioning. She says since Monday night there have been three Arabic men st staying at the hotel and that they left this morning. Now she says that they were dressed in Arabic clothes with a burnous, which is that long veil on, on their head with the band around the forehead that you see the traditional garment. And uh, FBI have been questioning her and she's been looking in the records trying to find their registration, what names they registered under. Now, um, we have seen uh, a couple of the FBI agents come out. One was wearing blue plastic gloves. So I'm um, guessing from that that they are taking fingerprints and searching the room that the three men stayed at. Now, apparently two men were staying in one room and one man was uh, had registered two rooms to himself, but she thinks that the three men were together. Once again, they um, checked out of the plaza in this morning. Devin. Okay, Tara, thanks very much. Uh, intriguing in the, t in, in the mystery of it all, though hard to believe that anybody who was going to be behind something like this we might stay be around. foolish enough to yeah. A, stay around, or, or B, be walking around in very traditional Mideastern garb right. for a couple of days beforehand. However, uh, since we were talking with Tara again, we will go ahead and repeat one more time for you the All Points Bulletin from the Oklahoma City Police. They're looking for two, perhaps three, uh, most likely two, Middle Eastern men, uh, last seen wearing blue jogging suits and traveling in a brown pickup truck with tinted windows. Uh, there you see a, a printed out version of, in fact, this is a little more exact than uh, of what we've had already. Apparently the first one, 20 to 25 years old, the second one a little older, 35 to 38 years old. The third suspect, if indeed there is one, would have been uh, simply a driver in this, uh, in this entire incident and we should keep in mind we don't know necessarily that the people that they are looking for at the uh, plaza inn in southeast oklahoma city are necessarily what we would term suspects yet they are people however though that the police would very much like to talk to and question we need to talk to david payne right now he's down at the family assistance center david what can you tell us from there well i'm at uh, northwest 36th and walker and i've been here about 20 minutes or so when i got here hardly anybody was here at all but about the last 15 minutes i tell you what, a lot of folks uh, driving up pulling Pulling in and getting out, uh, kids walking up with uh, parents, loved ones, and friends, and uh, it's really a depressing sight here. I, I can just, that's all I can say for the most part. People, they show up here, they take an application out for the most part in a description, and they write down what their loved one looked like or what their uh, relative or their friend looked like, and uh, this, is, this isn't where you come to find out whether they've, they've died or they're injured. This is just to kind of connect things together with, uh, the, with what you fill out and with what the, uh, the, uh, the medical people have and they kind of meet hands so later on this makes it a much easier process to find out whether you have indeed lost a loved one 
or, or a relative. But again, a very depressing side here. But folks that are still worried and, and are, are looking for that, that person can, can, can start the process now by uh, coming out here. And it's again, Northwest 36 and Walker. There's counselors here and I can talk to you. And then there's also people that you, and there's sheets of information you fill out. And again, describe the, the one that you are looking for. And uh, again, when you come out, they can't tell you whether they are, they are deceased or not. It's not that kind of a deal. You just come out and just kind of makes the process a little bit shorter and a little bit easier. So again, a depressing sight here, but uh, we'll stay here and uh, we'll get back with you a little bit later. And David, are you still with us there? Yes, I am. So this, I mean, that is the first place for people to go to, to get themselves into the process here, correct? That's right. This, this is the uh, first and I think so far the only place here in Oklahoma City. It's, it's a big facility. It's a big church. And uh, again, come in on the southeast entrance here, and it's, it's plenty big to hold uh, uh, several people, of course, uh, numerous people. And uh, people, as, I, as I'm talking to you right now, I can still see them walking up the sidewalk. So uh, I've seen fathers with little girls and little boys coming up, and it's just, it's just terrible. I mean, they're just looking for uh, their, their, lost, their, their uh, lost loved one. Okay, David, thank you very much. Let's go back to uh, Dr. Spangler, who's in our newsroom. You know, Doctor, the thing that cuts so deep here is the uh, death and injury to children. And I know you were involved in a lot of Camera's that today. Can you hear me, Doctor? Doctor, can you hear us there yet? Okay, okay. we're still uh, some microphone processing. problems there. Okay, we'll be getting back to him in just a little bit. Uh, another reminder, though, for people who are looking for ways to help, uh, most of the blood banks that we have talked to uh, are full and uh, have really all the help that they need at this point. However, still O positive and O negative blood, I believe, were still uh, what we were hearing that the Red Cross needed. Other smaller things, uh, Feed the Children, if you would like to go down, uh, drop by them, uh, their headquarters at 333 North Meridian uh, and donate food. Feed the Children will then take all of that food downtown to help with all of the rescue efforts and uh, uh, all of the family members of victims who are still down there waiting. There will be a, a large feeding task uh, to go on as we get closer to the dinner hour down there. So if you'd like to help, Feed the Children is one possibility. Also, if you're a restaurant owner, uh, Feed the Children will pick up uh, restaurant meals and deliver them downtown as well. 942-0228 is the phone number to call if you'd like to get involved with that. And what a poignant sight that is. Uh, a little girl with a blood-streaked face and uh, a scene that we are seeing far, far too often this afternoon. Dr. Sven That's KFOR in Oklahoma City. A joint venture today between CNN and our affiliates there are doing yeoman's work and providing uh, information and uh, remarkable videotape. We have official uh, confirmed dead now in Oklahoma City of 19, more than 200 injured, and the rescue operation continues. CNN will take a break. We'll be right back. And commitment and compassion for those who have been injured. Uh, it really is uh, remarkable the lines that have appeared in front of the Red Cross and in front of hospitals to give blood. Uh, we intend to honor the dead and honor the living by finding out who did this and never permitting this conduct to recur. <clears throat> President Clinton has declared this a federal emergency. FEMA will be responding, and they had intended to be here by now, but they should be here shortly to assist in the cleanup efforts. The FBI has been designated by President Clinton as the lead federal agency in this investigation. All the agencies, however, in that building have pledged their full cooperation, and of course, uh, they were the ones most injured. We do, the FBI did not have an office at that federal building, and we did not suffer any casualties, but however, many of our fellow uh, law enforcement brothers were, were injured and we still do not have a count with regard to the extent of that injury. Uh, we have at this time no assumptions with regard to who caused this particular bombing. And we have had hundreds, if not thousands, of leads from individuals calling in to reputed eyewitnesses. Each one of those is treated very seriously. But at this point, we cannot speculate with regard to who is responsible. Other than that, I think uh, we have very little else to add to that. We will throw it out to questions. Mr. Uh, the Chief of the Police Department indicated that we had the individuals here that will be glad to respond to any area that you might have. Yes.
We have, uh, the Attorney General came on right before we began this press conference, and, and I think she's absolutely correct when she indicated that we are not going to discuss individuals at this time. As I indicated earlier, we have hundreds of potential suspects. A number of coincidence that, uh, coincidences that have occurred. Uh, however, to say that it's one particular group or one individual, we're not anywhere near making any statement with regard to that. Uh, yes, sir. Dead, or how many left in the building? Chief, you want to comment on what you have there? Is FEMA here? The only numbers we have right now that I want to give out would be confirmed. Uh, I choose, we don't want to give uh, estimated or, or uh, anything that we've seen in the building at this time, so I choose only to give numbers that have actually been extracted and confirmed. We have 58 critical transports that have occurred up to this point. Uh, we have 20 confirmed dead in a portable morgue at this point. Uh, we're sure that that number will go up because we have seen uh, fatalities in the buildings that haven't been removed yet. But again, I don't want to start speculation on numbers. So uh, we'll update you from time to time. But what you'll get from uh, us are the confirmed numbers at this point. So you don't want to speculate, but however, we heard a second ago from uh, the Attorney General say that there could be 200, 250 people missing. Could you at least go into what's unaccounted for? We haven't been able to get any unaccountability at this point. I know the agencies are all getting hold of their people and trying to do some unaccountability, but uh, we don't have any idea at this Gary, point. Gary, what, what is the potential for this building coming down? Well, we've had the architect early on showed up at, at the building, and we put him uh, with his blueprints and has uh, looked through the building. We had some concerns about the uh, stability on the west side at some point early on. Uh, that was confirmed to be more of a, a decorative effect on the outside and not structural members. Uh, we have some level of confidence that the structure is sound at this point with what's left standing. Could you paint a picture for us, if you would, of the devastation... We've been listening to a press conference called by Governor Frank Keating of Oklahoma, the mayor of Oklahoma City, Ron Norick, and various law enforcement and rescue officials there in the city. They were relating the sort of efforts that have been underway, both emergency efforts to, uh, to evacuate the building as well as investigative efforts. The latest numbers, 20 have been confirmed dead. They're sure the number will go up. Of course, we'll have more coming up shortly on World News Tonight with Peter Jennings and later this evening on Primetime Live and Nightline. This has been a special report from ABC News. Headline News, I'm Chuck Roberts. Many people are speaking out. In fact, Oklahoma City officials say 20 people have been confirmed killed from today's car bombing and many other people, scores of others, have been hurt. The explosion rocked the Alfred Murrah Federal Building downtown. Still no firm numbers on the hurt and missing, and still no suspects or claim of, claims of responsibility. Shock waves were felt as far away as Washington, where President Clinton has promised a strong response. Toria Tolley has been following the story all day. She joins us now from the update desk with the latest. Toria? Well, check the president finished a news conference about half an hour ago. His statement was brief and to the point. Welcome to Inside Edition. I'm Deborah Norville. Has America become a terrorist target? That's the question being asked today after a car bomb exploded, destroying the federal building in downtown Oklahoma City. There has been considerable loss of life, including the deaths of more than one dozen young children at a daycare center. It just kept falling. It was a horrible noise. It was 9 o'clock this morning when the bomb ripped through the nine-story building, sending fire and debris throughout the structure. In addition to federal offices, including the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the building housed a daycare center. Some of the youngest injured were only two months old. Perhaps it's only coincidence, but today marks the second anniversary of the fiery conclusion of the federal siege of the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas. The threat of terrorism seems to be more of a constant in our lives. Today, gas once again filled the Japanese subways. And right now, closer to home, the trial continues in New York of the accused World Trade Center bombers. The obvious question, how safe are we? 
The bomb that exploded contained as much as 1,200 pounds of explosives, and the fear generated by the Oklahoma explosion is rippling across the country. Security has been tightened at federal buildings throughout the nation. Could it happen where you are? Security expert Philip Stern is managing director of the Fairfax Group, a corporate security and investigative firm. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. All over the country, people are asking, could this happen in my backyard? What's your response? Well, the evidence is clear that it can. And we started uh, two years ago in New York City, and people said, could it happen in the United States in general? Uh, many of us in the profession, uh, security personnel, uh, suspected that we were vulnerable in other cities, and this is, I think, quality evidence that we are vulnerable. Why are we vulnerable? What is it that you believe exists that makes us vulnerable to this sort of thing throughout the country? Well, the United States is a big open society. We have no difficulty traveling from state to state. Uh, once you're in the United States, freedom of travel is key. Um, and as we get out of our big urban centers, the New Yorks, the Washingtons, mm -hmm. the Boston, that have been on alert for years now, you get to places where the tradition and, and the anxiety is not there. Oklahoma City would not be on anybody's target list. Uh. It's always difficult to speculate the day an event like this happens, but they're telling us it left a crater eight feet wide, that 200 people at least were injured, and that the, the car bomb itself appears to have been similar to that which was parked at the World Trade Center garage and caused the explosion there. Is there a connection between the New York bombing and what's happened in Oklahoma City? Is it reasonable to expect that there would be? Well, I think it's reasonable to expect there would be some connection. We've been the target of Middle East, uh, certainly rhetoric, and certainly Middle East acts. A uh, number of groups have claimed uh, that the United States is the evil. There's a jihad. It's a religious war. Um, car bombs are traditional Middle Eastern and European devices for those kind of explosions. Um, so you have empirical evidence to suggest that it would come from there, but it's pure speculation at this point. Beyond worrying, what can people do to try to protect themselves to stay safe? Well, I think the general population has very little ability to do anything but get on with their lives. Uh, there are certain key things that one does. Uh, if you're working in an office building and you see something unusual, either a large uh, device or, or package or car that's been parked there more than an hour, mm -hmm. uh, you should report it to your security people. And don't feel dots. like a fool for doing so. Absolutely not. I mean, the, the worst thing you can do is not ask the dumb question and ignore it because that's when tragedy happens. So we're our own best protection by seeing something that's out of the ordinary or unusual in these situations. So don't be afraid to pick up the phone and say, I don't like the looks of this over That's here. right. And let the security people check it out. Philip Stern, thank you very much for being with us. I'm sure your phone's been ringing off the hook today. They certainly have. All right. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Our other big story today comes from the Simpson case. Channel 7, the Tri-State's 24-hour news source. The entire side of a federal office building in Oklahoma City ripped off by a massive car bomb. Hundreds of people are injured and the death toll is mounting. President Clinton says this was the work of evil cowards. These people are killers, and they must be treated like killers. And there was evil at work in Japan today, another poison gas attack. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. It is now clear to the investigators that the enormous explosion at a federal building in Oklahoma City this morning was the work of terrorists. The bomb went off just as hundreds of people had showed up for work, just as children had been dropped off at a daycare center on the second floor. In one devastating moment, the whole front side of the building was ripped away. There is simply no way to be specific about how many people have lost their lives. But the death toll is clearly increasing as the hours go by and emergency teams work their way through the devastation. We do know that 17 children were killed in the daycare center, others injured. It was easy to see why the governor of Oklahoma said this was the work of animals. Our first report is from Aaron Hayes, who is on the scene. Most people were already inside at work here when the blast ripped the nine-story federal office building apart, shattering floors and the offices inside. Most devastating of all, the daycare center on the second floor destroyed. That was where most of the children who were killed had been. Uh, we pulled probably, I guess we pulled six ba dead babies out and a couple of dead women. And 
It's just, it's just the most the devastating. Fell, they just everything fell on top of It's the most the devastating thing I've ever seen in my life. It's just like an atomic bomb went off. The ceiling went in and all the windows came in. And... I didn't know if it was a tornado or an earthquake. The whole building shook and then everything just started crashing down on, on top of you and you just kind of hit the floor and waited till it all stopped. This is the main triage area. For hours, the scene here remained chaotic. People injured by exploding glass and debris stood dazed, looking for help. It was difficult to find enough ambulances to take care of all of them. I never experienced anything like it. You feel a concussion, and then the next thing you know, you're on the floor covered in glass. Uh, we lost conscious for just a few seconds, you know, but it was uh, really amazing. Authorities now say it appears to have been a car bomb in a vehicle parked in front of the federal building that caused the explosion. The force from it damaged buildings nearby and was felt 30 miles away. Rescue work has made it clear just how much damage was done. Whole sections of floors collapsed. You can see on the upper floors in one of those offices there are some people trapped up there. Um, they were up there for quite some time while we were there. You can see the firefighter there climbing up a ladder, trying to get uh, as close as possible to those people, but he was shy about two floors. Very frustrating for him, I'm sure. Just no way to get up there. It has taken all afternoon for rescuers to recover bodies here. People were trapped inside for hours, and some are still believed trapped here. We've got some people alive that are trapped beneath rubble that is kind of kind of pancake land at an angle, and it's going to take uh, some very large, heavy equipment to assist us in moving that so we can get to some of the people. Outside, friends and family of those who worked here searched for them amidst the confusion. Emergency workers were overwhelmed. For a long time, there was no one to explain what had happened or who had survived it. Uh, we, we've had a lot of little rocky things getting in our way. We found a, 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 a rocket that was in a bunker inside the building that had fallen down, and the bomb squad uh, took care of that. But uh, again, we're, we're just systematically going through the building. We do still have people, uh, survivors inside the building that we are uh, attempting to get out this time. I, I just woke up and I was covered with glass. I didn't know what was going on. I just got out. And came out and looked, and I saw all of this black smoke and everything, and I ran up here, and then I saw all of the injured children. Oh, oh, oh. As a precaution, all of the city's state and federal workers were sent home. Buildings around the explosion site evacuated. With workers still sifting through debris, it is unclear when this section of the city might return to normal. Today, Oklahoma's governor, Frank Keating, said the state is in mourning, and he made a vow to honor the dead and living, he said, by finding out just who did this. Yeah. Aaron Hayes, ABC News, Oklahoma City. President Clinton came out late this afternoon to make a statement on the bombing. He did not take any questions, but he certainly made promises about what will happen to the killers when they're found. Here's ABC's Brit Hume. <laughs> This has been a tragic and heartbreaking day. I ask all Americans tonight to pray. The whole building just felt like it was caving in. I didn't know what was going on. to save lives. The eyes of the nation and the world are focused on Oklahoma City. Terrorism hits the heartland and hearts feel for our city. Oklahoma City, this evening has lost its innocence. Our nation is mourning for the many who lost their lives. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Cherokee Ballard. Jack Bowen has been at the scene all day. We continue our coverage. We began our coverage this morning about 9.30 uh, to bring you the very latest. Right now, we have Jack Bowen, who is standing by live at the scene. Uh, Jack, first of all, any new information you may have and the, your perspective? There sure is. Uh, Gary Mars, Oklahoma City Fire Chief, has an update now on the casualty toll. 
Uh, we ha currently have uh, 27 that have been uh, confirmed taken out of the building. We do have numerous uh, fatalities the of, in the building. That's And that's the number of bodies when you say 27 at the morgue right now? That's correct, yes. And uh, should we expect a, a lot more? Yes, we we know of uh, confirmed still in the building that hasn't been brought out yet, um, but I don't have a number that are in that building. As you can imagine, Jennifer, um, amongst every... Uh, emergency agency involved in this hospitals were the ones really running on pure adrenaline nearly 500 people were rushed to metro hospitals in the frantic moments just after the explosion the uh, people they were dealing with were cut broken and certainly hurting our medical reporter jane braden has uh, been covering the situation at the local hospitals all throughout the day uh, the hospitals trained for disasters jane but i don't know that anything could really prepare them for something like what they had to deal with today no, Jennifer, no one that I talked to today was prepared for what they saw. And what they saw was absolutely incredible. Their hospital, which has orderly emergency rooms, which has orderly criteria for putting people in the hospital, were in just chaos as the ambulances were coming in waves, dropping off people going back, coming in waves, dropping off people. Cars were coming in. There would be pickup trucks uh, pulling up, and people would just unload out of them, uh, bringing victims out with them. It was an incredible scene. We have many pictures from earlier this morning when it was at the height of the crisis. The scream of ambulances. So many hurting people, they had to unload some in the streets. And still, the ambulances kept coming. Wheelchairs lined the sidewalk, waiting for victims. Doctors and nurses were literally racing to help. It's been a nightmare. Lots of facial lacerations, lots of blood. There was a terrible moment when it all seemed to stop as a two-year-old little girl was taken from the ambulance, dead. Some people were in shock, grateful to finally be in the arms of a doctor who could make it better. Doctors, nurses, technicians came from all over the area. We've had an, an amazing outpouring of support from the medical community. An army ready to help. Load after load of medical supplies came in from around the state. These were caring people wanting to fight this attack the best way they can with healing. Two-year-old Evan Pendleton is finally going home. He was hurt at daycare, the YMCA daycare, safe at last in the frantic arms of his parents. I'm so relieved, and I'm praying for all those other people. All those other people were beginning to learn their names to put a face to this crisis, and that makes it even more real to us. Let's go down to Jack Bowen who is live at the scene again, Jack. Awful as what happened today is, uh, when the worst happens in Oklahoma, it always brings out some of the best in Oklahomans. One of the ordinary people who became a hero today as a volunteer, a man named Bill Bay. Bill, so you know, uh, some good news. Uh, we actually have video of you in a picture a minute ago helping a lady and uh, the lady that you were helping this morning and we're told that uh, we have that picture up on the screen right now and we're told by some, uh, from back at the station through sources that they have some other people who helped her that she is alive and doing okay oh, at this point. That's great news. That's wonderful. I mean, it made it all worth well. <laughs> that's great, Jack. You know, isn't it, uh, as you think about this, Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. You know, as you uh, as you think about this today, one rescue worker walked out uh, a while ago and talked a little bit about uh, what he thought, uh, what kind of person uh, that he couldn't believe, what kind of person would uh, would do this sort of thing, and especially as you look at another human being and see the uh, misery that was inflicted, it must you know, be awfully difficult to believe. Jack, I never realized what type of a position I was putting myself in. Uh, it could have come caving in on me at any any point in time, but I never gave that one thought. All Didn't I care. wanted, no, all I wanted to do was help this one lady. You know, uh, she wanted help, and I was there for her. Bill helped a lady named Dana for three hours while she was trapped today. Went home afterwards, uh, contacted, found out what hospital she was in, talked with doctors. She was in surgery at that point. Uh, we believe a limb had to be amputated. He says he'll be checking back tomorrow. Has a large emotional stake in what happens to her. Jennifer, Cherokee. And Jack, an update for you you'll be very interested in. We understand that uh, Bill Bay has been in contact with uh, 
with at least the doctors who have been working with Dana, and uh, he was told this evening, just a few minutes ago, in fact, that she is doing fairly well. So uh, that is some, uh, some very good news. Good. It has been, as you can believe, an unbelievable day for all of us. Uh, just unconscionable terror. You can't imagine the animals that uh, had to be responsible for this. Our five new crew, news crews have been all over the story since uh, about 9.04 this morning. The pictures of this tragedy are unforgettable. It is awfully hard on rescue workers. Uh, you get to the scene, you want to help. At least, at least five the there. Firefighters. There's just one person still in there. Right, yeah. that's what it appears. And that person is, appears to be a construction worker, probably somebody that works with the crane company. The firefighters the have all gone inside. Um, and a, a, again, you know, they may have been doing this on the other side, uh, back in another part of the building, and we just couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. They may have been taking firefighters up to different levels to look for survivors and look for victims. And this may just be our first chance to get a, a glimpse of what they're up to. Heidi, that crane has been in front of that building all evening. Have they yet to use it on this particular side, as long as you've mentioned that? Is this the first time they've this used This is that? the first time that we've seen this basket go mm -hmm. up. Uh, I, I'm not sure what else it may have been doing. It has been there, as you say, for some time this evening. They brought it in uh, when it was still daylight, uh, late this afternoon. So I'm, I'm really not sure what all they've been doing with it up until now, but this is the first time we've seen them use this basket. basket. Heidi, hold on just a second. Tamara, you can see this from where you are as well. What, can, you, can you enlighten us any about uh, what may be going on? We can see them moving debris around inside on that floor. But other than that, we're kind of at a loss to know what's going on. We've counted about six to seven people in and out of that basket. They've been lowering it up, lowering it down. No one has been inside the basket. We can tell you that much tonight, Jennifer. Uh, obviously looking for uh, any signs of life, anyone who may be uh, inside still, any victims, any uh, fatalities. The chopper, Oklahoma City Police chopper overhead, shining a little bit of light on the building that you can... Uh, See, they're spotlighting the areas, maybe looking as well to see if they can find anything. Now, the good news out here right now, besides the fact that we did find two people um, alive inside, one of them in the basement, you can see the helicopter there spotlighting the area, hopefully looking for uh, victims. Obviously, that's not where the basket is, so I'm not sure, you know, Tamara, what they that may be, I'll be interesting to see if they will focus that down where they're trying to, to search here. But it doesn't seem to be, does it? It's no, no, just it doesn't. looking around the building. They seem to be too high, as a matter of fact. The basket's all the way down to the bottom. Now, keep in mind, the wind was a real problem earlier, we, so we didn't see the basket. Two blocks from the scene. The axle of the vehicle has been found two blocks from the scene of the blast, and that's according to a police source talking to the FBI officials. So uh, and that gives you an indication of the, the, the power of this blast. I'm told With that the, the FBI, estimations are about 1,000 to 2,000. tell us that, yes, they are being investigated. So apparently all of these little pieces may uh, fit mm -hmm. together to form part of the puzzle. We're staying on this picture, and, and every now and then, if you look carefully, you can see the, the firefighters moving ever so slowly. We are switching you now to uh, coverage being provided by local station KFOR in Oklahoma City. They have to be extremely careful every time they move something and yet they're trying to make their way as we understand to one individual, one survivor we believe who is, who is trapped right now inside the building. Well if you've ever played a game of pickup sticks mm -hmm. you know that by moving one stick uh, you can cause a, an awful chain reaction and that is the concern that they've got right now made uh, all the more difficult by the fact that it's dark now and the weather has certainly uh, added some problems to that as well, though fortunately right now most of the rain seems to be holding off. It does appear that we are going to have to try and take our good news in very small packages. Uh, ...images unfold on television. Much of the national coverage was provided by NBC affiliate KFOR-TV. And here's a portion of their newscast from Wednesday evening. And, uh, Jana Davis recounts this day that has been in Oklahoma City. Explosion and the ceiling fell in. It exploded, the windows came out. Some of us tried to get under desk. Some of the girls that were by the window was trying. We we're trying to get to them to get them out from underneath uh, the windows and the desks and stuff that, that, that fell on top of them. We we're trying to get them out. They were in there. Okay. Right there by that window. Are you okay. Give us a chance to sort this out, okay? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, you can't go beyond that. I don't care. Wait, 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 wait. Where is it? Right there. The agony, the terror. Frantic relatives desperate to know if their loved ones would be among the very few to emerge alive. Murphy, this is one of the critical. It's 10 a.m., just one hour after the murderous blast.
the living dig their way out of a cement tomb. Suddenly, rescue efforts come to a halt. Another bomb scare. They said clear the area. So it's going to blow again, bro. Or... It's going to blow again? They must have found another device, I guess. That's all I could figure. For an agonizing moment, EMS workers are forced to abandon the screams of survivors. They just ordered everybody back, and everybody grabbed their equipment and pulled back. Tell me about the injured that you had to leave behind. What were they saying? What were they doing? They didn't want us to leave. We had to leave them. What did they say? Don't leave. 20 minutes later, emergency crews return to their gut-wrenching task. They scale indescribable wreckage and a blanket of dead bodies. Their mission? To unearth those who have been buried alive. Soon triage units set up to care for survivors are converted to morgues. Two different triage teams, we race around the other side of the building in time to uh, uh, catch two children and one adult, and there was basically nothing we could do for them. They were just, they were gone. What the word came from some of the staff coming down was that they were having to amputate in order to remove some of those folks because the damage was so extreme. And the best way to get them out under the circumstances was to amputate. Right before we left, they were amputating a woman's leg to try and get her out. Yeah, they were calling for trauma dressing. Yeah, they and were, they were bandages, bandages to, to control the bleeding, I guess, after they amputated her leg to get her out. From the destruction and death emerges the daunting question, why? Why here? Why Oklahoma City? Why America? Jaina Davis, News Channel 4. As I've recounted for you a couple of times throughout the day, I think the most poignant line, the most uh, gut-wrenching line that we heard all day was earlier this afternoon we were speaking with a couple of nurses. We were talking about the scale back of the triage units, how they were calling back the volunteers, and in her words, there's no one to save. I think that all hit us like a ton of bricks, if you'll pardon the expression, given that we had a building collapse. Mm -hmm. But I think that all really took the wind out of our sails quite a bit. Here's that interview as Tara Bloom uh, was talking with two nurses on the scene earlier today. As you see on TV from the shots uh, from this morning, the whole sides of the buildings are blown out. It's just a war zone. There is rubble everywhere. There are parking meters laying everywhere. There are parts of cars laying all throughout the street. Now, Did you see any, any, any survivors? Any of the